And then once you're there on set with Stephen Frears in High Fidelity, how was that relationship between the two of you? Interesting, because uh, I revered him and I was very nervous around him. And uh, I just really wanted his approval. You know, I wanted him to love what I was doing. And he didn't, he wasn't that kind of guy. He's not the kind of guy that like, heaps praise on anyone. So what would happen? Like you would think you, like you would, you would do a take and then look for something from him and he would be poker faced? I just remember acting my ass off and then looking over, yeah. And he would go, good, it's fine. Good, fine. I wouldn't say anything, but in my mind I was like, he hates me. This really? fucking sucks. <laughs> And so it just, it kept on going that way. And then I would go back to my hotel room and just think. And then like in the morning I would take a shower and I would say things like, I remember this one time I was like, I had like a big scene coming up that day and I was singing in the shower. This is so dumb, this is embarrassing. All of the fucking way, all of the fucking way. It wasn't really singing. I was like angrily chanting to myself in the shower to go all the way. Really? Yeah, because I was afraid I wasn't go, gonna go it's all like the way. It's like your mantra for the day. You I just gonna... knew it was, I knew I needed to go balls to the walls and there was something blocking me. So I needed to like do weird shit like that to just. I think it's so interesting. You know, when I, when I saw that film, it's set up so perfectly. Um, you know, at, at the end, the idea is that John Cusack, who owns the record store, uh, takes some neighborhood kids and decides to put out their EP. And so he's getting his life together and he's gonna have this record release party and he's gonna DJ at the party. And then it turns out your character's gonna, his band is gonna play Sonic Death Monkey. And, and John Cusack is like, this is gonna be terrible because he's gonna show up and drive everyone away before we play this EP and he's gonna ruin my party. And everyone watching the, the film is assuming that's the way the script is gonna go. <laughs> Like, everything's gonna finally be going well for John Cusack, and then Sonic Death Bunk, he's gonna get up and ruin everything. Yeah. And then you come on, and you start singing Let's Get It On by Marvin Gaye. And there's a lot, you know, you sing a line or two, and, and the whole place goes kind of crazy. And then it cuts to John Cusack's face, and his eyebrows go up. And I think that, like, in that moment, my eyebrows went up, and I think everyone in the theater at every screening, their eyebrows went up. And, and it was like, oh my God. Like, and I think that's the first time probably most of the world found out like that you can really sing. And, and I wonder if, if at that point in the film, if you knew like what the power of that scene was gonna be. I mean, did you know you guys had something really special there? I knew that there was a lot of pressure on that scene. Before, we, it was like, wait a second, this is the big finish, it's the end of the movie, and it basically says, and then he's great at singing and the song is great and everyone loves it, so it's like, did that what the terrify fuck? you? Yes, but you can't do that. <laughs> you can't write that. So yeah, there was a lot of pressure on that song, and I remember they didn't want. They, it, initially in the script, it was a different song. It was a different Marvin Gaye song. It was the one that got Pharrell in all this trouble recently. Oh, I don't know. He used to go out to parties. Oh, it was that one. Dance till noon. Get yourself together, baby. Having a ball. And I was like, I'm not gonna sing that song. That's not the song you sing at the end of fucking High Fidelity for a big finish. Uh, let's do, let's get it on. If we're gonna do Marvin Gaye, let's get it on. And he was like, all right, okay. You wanna do Let's Get It On? You can do Let's Get It On. But it was like, then I was like, yeah, I'm gonna do Let's Get It On. <laughs> and I was like freaking out like, why did I say I'm gonna do Let's Get It On? Which is a really hard song. It's a say. really hard, much harder. But I knew that it needed that, like, fucking, <clears throat> Yeah. Needed to fucking get it on. Yeah. So then we did it. It was time to do it. And I did it. And the first take, uh, you know, we shot different things, and then it was time for my thing. And uh, we did it, and it was just sort of, I didn't go all of the fucking way. That much we know. And it was just sort of lukewarm. And the audience was like, yay. And it was a big finish at the end of the movie. And uh, Stephen Frears said, cut! And he got up on the stage and he didn't look at me. He looked at everybody in the audience. What the fuck are you doing? This is the end of the film. You are ruining the film. He was so mad. Because he was like, they weren't fucking getting crazy and loving the song. Really? But really, I think he was yelling at me. But he didn't yell at me. He yelled at them 
for not cheering for me, but he was mad at me for fucking taking a shit on his movie. And he was like, let's take it again. And then I fucking, I blasted it out. I Do you fucking, think he's some sort of like psychological genius? I think he does have, uh, yeah, some warlock powers. So, so you elevated the. Yeah, I think I needed I needed uh, someone to uncork me. Wow. That's what he did. If he had yelled at me, it would have shut me down. I wouldn't have been able to uh, to. I would have gone into my shell, and my wiener would have gone in the turtle. Close. <laughs> the balls would have gone up, and then you could just call it, it a in. night. Yeah. That's it. But he yelled at them. <laughs> For some reason, that worked for me. To continue the off-camera experience, visit offcamera.com. Get full access to additional content, podcasts, and the off-camera magazine. Because the best conversations happen off-camera.